Um, it's my great pleasure now to actually introduce our keynote speaker for the day, the Honourable Greg Hunt, MP, Minister assisting the Prime Minister for the Public Service and Cabinet. And as most of you are probably aware, Minister Hunt is also the Minister for Health. So I know that he's been spending quite a bit of time over the last few weeks really focused on the coronavirus and our response, and also how we actually help people that are impacted by the bushfires, particularly on mental health issues that they're facing. So it's absolutely great to have him here today. And for me personally, it's fantastic to introduce him to you because he was my minister when I worked in the environment department quite a few years ago. So please, um, Join me in welcoming Minister Hunt to the stage. Thanks very much to, uh, uh, to Mary, to, uh, to, to Peter Woolcott, uh, to Rosemary Huxtable, to uh, Diane. Uh, I have to say, a, a one-way ticket to, to Mars. Uh, that's been offered to me. And uh, it, it is not just, that's not public service. That's uh, service to humanity and it's a great adventure but it is an adventure like no other and uh, I wish you well on the one hand uh, staying on earth uh, as a consolation prize is not a bad option uh, to Randall but to all of you who are engaged in the greater public service I want to honour and acknowledge and to thank you and to put this in the context of course of acknowledging Indigenous Australia and the Ngunnawal and uh, one of the great passions that many of us share is Indigenous health and we are working together uh, on an Indigenous Health Futures program and to think of the really practical things that brings together acknowledgement of Indigenous Australia, uh, recognition of their challenges and the notion of public service, the goals that we have set and are pursuing uh, through the uh, Medical Research Future Fund and the missions of ending avoidable Indigenous blindness by 2025, ending avoidable Indigenous deafness by 2025, ending and eradicating rheumatic heart disease by 2030. And we've set those goals after working with people in this room and in other parts of the public service and engaging with the community and engaging with the medical profession on real human goals, which if we apply ourselves are genuinely achievable. And you own those. You've helped create those, and there is no way we could deliver those without you. And that, in so many ways, brings all of this together. Equally, I want to start in talking today about three things, uh, the public, the service, and the future, with a simple proposition. I genuinely believe, and I know the Prime Minister and the Cabinet believe, that we are blessed with one of the finest, if not the finest, public service in the world. The people, the culture, the ethos, the capacity, all of those come together. And I think that's a very important message, to recognise that you are valued, you are appreciated, both within the, the Westminster tradition, but in a very Australian way. Uh, I've met so many of you, and uh, I l look at Mary when I think of this, uh, who have taken frank and fearless to heart. And that's what we want, uh, who have taken uh, the values of putting forward ideas and then just getting on and doing the job uh, and, uh, and achieving outcomes in a practical way for the public. And to start with an example, Mary mentioned coronavirus. On uh, Friday, uh, Brendan Murphy, uh, who uh, will succeed the extraordinary Glenys Beecham as the Secretary of Health, but is currently the Chief Medical Officer. Brendan Murphy and I went uh, to, uh, to Darwin. We went to the RAF base, where less than 24 hours beforehand, the National Security Committee had made a decision to stand up uh, Howard Springs, which is a uh, former construction workers' camp for the IMPACTS project in Darwin, to stand that up as a temporary quarantine facility with the consent and support of the Northern Territory Government. Within that 24 hours at RAF Base Darwin, Border Force, uh, the broader public service, the Department of Health, uh, the National Critical Care and Trauma Centre, which runs the Australian Medical Assistance Teams, or OSMAT, uh, and uh, the ADF had come together and created a reception and processing and 
quarantine, quarantine transition and medical assistance uh, facility for those patients and passengers who were being airlifted from Wuhan. That airlift in itself was an extraordinary consular and public service operation. And then we visited uh, the actual National Critical Care and Trauma Centre uh, by the airport in Darwin. And we saw the planning and I met uh, with uh, Terry Truen and Di Stevens uh, from the NTC. And the readiness and logistics which they had mobilised to care for the passengers that were coming from Wuhan, who of course in many ways had had a traumatic uh, experience, was unbelievable in its professionalism and it had drawn on so many different parts of the public service who tasked with an operation had mobilised uh, in under 24 hours. And there were layers of preparation over years and years. And all of that preparation had come together into this moment. And then we went to the actual Howard Springs site. And that was a hive of activity. ADF, Border Force, Defence contractors, Health, the Northern Territory, all in a seamless operation. And within 24 hours of that decision that, uh, by the NSC, that facility had been stood up. And that is an incredible operation. And that is just one of the many examples of how we work to protect and safeguard the public and to support them. Equally during the course of the bushfires, I want to acknowledge that many of you here worked right through the summer, but also may have had your homes threatened, lived through the, the very distressing bushfire smoke in the first half of January, uh, which, you know, with young children or, uh, you know, older uh, parents of grandparent age, uh, well, added an extra layer of personal concern and stress. And some of you may have lost property and some of you may have been associated with even greater tragedy. So I want to firstly thank and acknowledge you for your work, but acknowledge that as humans, as residents, as public in yourselves, there uh, could well have been uh, deep pressures on, on each and, and any of you. And we worked very hard to do a number of things. The uh, uh, compulsory mobilisation of the uh, uh, ADF reservists and over 6,000 people who were mobilised and sent into different communities across New South Wales and South Australia and Victoria. And that support, along with Services Australia, uh, whether it was, again, the Department of, uh, of Prime Minister and Cabinet, whether it was uh, people uh, across so many different areas, meant that real things happened. The ADF was mobilised. A uh, relief agency was stood up within a matter of days, uh, headed by uh, AJ Colvin, so uh, Andrew Colvin, but drawing on a multi departmental and interdepartmental uh, staff, again, established out of nothing, brought together off the back of contingency proposals uh, and operating within days. We know that you know, all up over 103 million has been allocated and distributed to families. 156,000 calls have been, uh, uh, you know, on uh, my latest advice, have been addressed and addressed in the most caring and humane of ways. And many are difficult where information isn't readily available to the person who's calling. And so that human assistance, as well as the system, as well as that sense of the public in the public service, uh, has made such a, a difference. On the ground, when I visited Coryong, uh, Chief of Staff Wendy Black, who's here with me, we went, we went to Coryong along with others. Coryong, which had been fire affected, a town which had uh, survived. Uh, which had faced a wall of fire, literally encircling it. Uh, as people came in, as the ADF arrived, they sit on the ground. We knew we were OK once the military got here. And they came with uh, a battalion of civilians, of public service. And we announced on the Sunday, with your help, the mental health support for those communities. And on the Wednesday, we were informed by the Coryong Health Service that they were already delivering and had been delivering since the day before the counselling services which you helped us put together and which we funded. And they were making a difference to people who had severe uh, emotional trauma, 
and they were actually preventing, they hoped and they believed, people from progressing to uh, what could potentially be post-traumatic stress or other mental health challenges. But all of that was backed up with real people getting real treatment because of your real work. So I want to thank and acknowledge that. Again, at the human level, this time drawing specifically on, on my department, uh, we, we know that you know, every day, literally on average once a day, new medicines are listed. And now we're turning them around at a, a faster rate than ever before. And to meet the families of uh, children uh, with spinal muscular atrophy and to see where a medicine such as Spinraza, uh, which, you know, and I want to, uh, Rosemary, acknowledge you and your department, you helped us turn around uh, literally within a matter of days after its approval, uh, which would otherwise have cost 300000 And to meet a mum and a dad who say their little daughter, who was declining in mobility, was on a terminal pathway, was regaining mobility, was uh, progressing and advancing, and they had their life and their hope and their daughter back um, because people moved rapidly. And they said, let's just get this done. That, that's the most important real thing. And it's the same with the Zero Childhood Cancer Program or with uh, CAR-T therapy, cellular immunotherapy, where we got the final approval uh, less than 24 hours before going into caretaker. And what would normally have taken six or eight weeks was done within that 24 hours. So it was the care was available for people and six families of children uh, with, uh, with a paediatric leukaemia were able to access treatment which in all probability has given those children a long future because to have waited six or eight weeks wouldn't have got them there and again you turned that around overnight and that's real and that's what matters and they're the things to remind ourselves of and that's why we value who you are and what you do which brings me to the service side and to look at both the tradition and uh, the contemporary situation here in terms of the service the big goals that as a, as a government, what we were elected to do, but an abiding duty of government, uh, the combination of economy and security. Why is the economy a matter? I, I, because it's the individual dignity and the individual work which comes with it, uh, uh, as well as the collective ability to provide for the services and the needs and the emergencies as, as they arise. So we have two tasks within that economic framework. One, uh, we have to manage our own Inter internal structures and our own expenditure. And I know that can be challenging, and Rosemary, I want to acknowledge and thank you and your department, and we always have good and bad days between us. We're a spending agency, I apologise for that. Uh, but I am also on ERC, uh, to, and we see that by managing uh, and living within our means, we actually protect the next generation, and we've been able to deal with the drought, the bushfire, and coronavirus as examples uh, of, the, uh, of that broader economic management. And so when, when we seek your help in managing within those parameters, it's for a reason. It's to make sure that we are resilient in terms of our public finances, which also helps with the, the greater task still of supporting investment uh, and supporting job creation. And what is it that has transform the economy more than anything and transform the public finances, getting people into work. As people come off welfare and they go into work, then that helps the public finances. But above all else, it's about their individual lives. And so that investment regime, and in particular, one idea that I want you to take away from here, what we want to do is to improve our standing uh, for ease of doing business. And to lift where we are on the global rankings is an indicator. Uh, currently, I think 17th, uh, and we want to get to be in the top 10 and then to go further for ease of doing business. And why does this matter? Uh, it's about simplifying people's capacity to get on with their lives, to invest, to create jobs. It's the same in all of yours. You just want you know, to make things simpler. So if you can look for those ideas, say, well, is there a step here that is really needed or can we foreshorten it? Can we assist people? And Sometimes that's called deregulation, but at the end of the day, it's uh, making uh, it easier to do business, making it simpler to engage. And you have 
the ideas, you see the processes, you may be closer to it than the ministers or their officers, and we want to invite and encourage your engagement on that front. The next thing uh, is uh, in terms of uh, as, we, as we look forward to the future, and in terms of the, uh, the future, and I, I will give you a little passing note here that uh, Peter Woolcott very generously allocated me 45 minutes today. Uh, I did, uh, in a previous life, uh, teach the uh, Geneva Conventions when I was doing my graduate work, and uh, I am absolutely certain, Peter, that 45 minutes would amount to arbitrary detention, so I don't propose to use all of that. Uh, but the, the, you know, in turning to the future, there are probably three things that I want to deal with here. As a public service now, going forward off the back of the Thody Review, which we've uh, acknowledged and uh, overwhelmingly uh, embraced, uh, we have innovation, we have evolution, uh, and we have your individual career development, which is so important, because unless you are valued, uh, it becomes harder to engage, and we do want to value and literally help each of your careers. In terms of the, the innovation, uh, your role is incredibly important. Let me give you an example. As we were developing the Emissions Reduction Fund uh, in environment, there was a whole team, uh, people like uh, Brad Archer and Stephen Kennedy, who's gone on to be the Secretary of the, uh, uh, the Treasury. Uh, we had uh, Lyndall Soper and others, all of whom were, were bringing ideas to a government policy position. And uh, they took what was you know, a strong policy position, but they improved it uh, and shaped it. And they made sure that it was an utterly competitive process and that there were protections for the public, and protections of the public money, but ultimately that it would be delivered in a way uh, which then went to getting projects stood up on the ground, helping the environment and helping uh, achieve our national goals together. And their innovation was such an important part of it. We now have an Australian Space Agency, and that came from a variety of different people. And I saw this in, in innovation when we were there. The CSIRO, uh, you know, with Larry Marshall and his team made suggestions. We had people from within the, uh, the Department of Industry, Innovation and Sciences at, the, at them was making their suggestions. And we were working with the academic community. And all of you were feeding in your ideas. And that Australian Space Agency, I think, will play a fundamentally important economic role but a more inspiring role st uh, still uh, of lifting people's vision of what Australia can be and where we can go. And Diane's role is such an important part uh, in that. And that came from you. Uh, and then as we evolve, what we have to do, and we've seen it through uh, the uh, disaster relief and the bushfire recovery agency, we've seen it through coronavirus, is to move much more across the silos. And uh, that's increasingly happening, and you know, Rosemary and Peter and others are encouraging it. But these events have helped drive that forward. So to be looking for opportunities out of this seminar, uh, the Thody Review, for how do we cooperate across the departments? And Cabinet does that. Uh, that's part of our role. But you can do it at any level to be engaging. And so we really want to evolve in that, in that way. And the other element of evolution is the combination of very clear goals coupled with delivery. So you always have to be frank and fearless. You always have to challenge us. That's, that's fundamental to who you are and we are in Westminster. But equally, uh, as we've seen with the case studies that I've, I've set out, where we've got clear goals, which have come for, through the NSC process or, or others, we your advice has been fed in, uh, and then ultimately a position has been uh, taken. Within 24 hours, amazing things can be done. So very clear deliverables and that, and that focus. Am I delivering? How are we delivering? That's, uh, that's the, ev the evolution. And then in terms of your own individual careers, one of the things that came out of Thody was the need for greater flexibility. And that flexibility comes in a number of ways. Firstly, the ability to move in and out of the public service, uh, to take that furlough, to have that academic or private sector experience. Uh, and one of the things that Peter will have to oversee 
is how to do that, and I note that you're sponsored by Commonwealth Superannuation, uh, how to do that whilst protecting your rights and, uh, and your economic position. That's a very important and realistic consideration. That's not being anything other than uh, responsible to your families. And so we're open to those conversations. We want to make it easier for you to have time in and out of the public service. But equally, about 70% of people also uh, have only ever been in the one agency. And so to move between agencies is the second great opportunity. And uh, that's e extraordinarily valuable for the public service, but as individuals in terms of the diversity of your experience, the evolution and the growth. And the third component in terms of your own careers uh, is the continued training. And uh, part of the 30 review is a commitment that we've made of $15 million to assist with the implementation of those outcomes. And so all of those things come together to say, we want this to be uh, not just service to the public, but a, an inspiring place for you to base a career, to develop not just a career, but a, voca a, voca a vocation where you have that sense of purpose, of value, of mission. And that's what I've seen. And I've been blessed with the departments with which I've been involved uh, and the people from all, all levels. And uh, you know, every day is a privilege to work with you. So today, I want to thank you, I want to honour you, and I want to wish you all of the best and to say what I saw last Friday uh, in 24 hours from a decision uh, at uh, Howard Springs, at Ausmat, and at RAF Base Darwin is the exemplar of what you can do at your best when, you, when we're all working together. I thank you, I honour you, and I wish you well.